when it comes to reversing a string, there can be so many different variations possible. This is one such example. So, in this problem, we will be looking at two different methods by which you can achieve the same result. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, first we will look at how you can use the stack data structure and then going forward, we will look how you can use the two pointer approach to arrive at the same result. After that, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, we need to make sure that we are understanding this problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a string S and you have to reverse the order of only English characters. What does that mean? It means that the order of all other symbols should remain the same. So let us look at our first test case. You can see that I have some English alphabets A, B, C and D and also I have this other character as well. So when you're reversing the string, this position should remain the same and all of the other characters should get reversed. So what happens? D comes in the first place, then you have a C, then a B and then a A. Notice that this hyphen, it was in the middle, so it is still in the middle, right? It will be even clear with the next test case that we have. So in the next test case, I have a bigger string and it has a few more characters. It has a hyphen, it has a equal to and it has an exclamation mark as well. Notice that you have to reverse the order of only English alphabets. All of the other symbols or characters, they will remain in their original place. What happens when you reverse the string? Just look at the answer. All of the English alphabets, they are in a reverse direction, right? S came at the very end, so it is at the very beginning. A was at the very beginning, so now it is at the very end, correct? But notice, all of the non-English alphabets, like the hyphen, the equal to and the exclamation, they are at their original places, right? They are unchanged. So this is what you have to keep in mind. You have to reverse only the English alphabets, not anything else. Similarly, you can look at the last test case also. In my last test case, I have a hyphen, then a B and then a hyphen again. If you have to reverse it, technically you just have one character that you have to reverse. If you reverse it, it stays in the same place, right? So for the last test case, my answer will look exactly similar to what was the input case because I don't have any other English alphabets available. So this is what you have to do in the problem. It is pretty straightforward. If you now feel that you have understood it even better, first feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and try to use the stack data structure. Over here, I have my test case. Now, the first question that should come to your mind is, how do you even determine that you have to use the stack data structure? Well, the question has a very good hint. You have to reverse the string, right? That means this is the last character and it should come in the very beginning. So what is happening? The last character should come in the beginning. That is telling you last in first out. And what inhibits a last in first out structure? That is the stack data structure, right? If you're new to stacks, just check out my introductory video first. So what I'm going to do is I take the help of a stack data structure. And now I will iterate over this string character by character. If you get an English character, just take this character and put it in your stack. So what will start to happen? As I start iterating, I have my first character A. So this gets entered into your stack, right? Now move ahead. I have a hyphen sign. It is not an English alphabet, so you just skip it. The next character is B, so this will also push into your stack. The next available character is C, so you just push it. Similarly, next, you have the equal sign, so you don't push it to your stack. Then you have the remaining characters and you will push them one by one to your stack data structure. You have now traversed over your entire string, correct? It is time that you build up your answer. So what will you do? Once again, you will start from the very beginning, right? So in the beginning, you have a character, right? That is the English alphabet. So instead of taking this character, you will take the character from your stack. So what do I get? I have an F and I will pop it out. I popped out an F, so now you will advance your pointer one step ahead. What do you get? This is a non-English alphabet. If you have a non-English alphabet, just take it as it is 
and you will write it down in your answer. Similarly, you will now go one step ahead and once again, you see a character that is the English alphabet. So instead of copying this alphabet, just look in your stack and pop out this element to your answer. And now move one step ahead. Once again, you have an English alphabet. So what will you do? You will go in your stack and then pop out a character. Move your pointer one step ahead now. You get an equal sign. So simply copy it. Move ahead. Now you will get all of your remaining characters. So they get popped out one by one. For your last character, you have the exclamation mark and then you just copy it as it is. So what just happened? Using your stack data structure, you were able to reverse only the letters. And this in fact is your answer, correct? So what did we do? We did one iteration just to scan the array. Hence, my time complexity is order of n. And we used one more iteration just to get our answer. So the time complexity is actually order of 2n, but it will equate to order of n because 2 is a constant. And talking about the space complexity, you will need an additional space of n size. This is taking up your stack. So the space complexity of this solution will also be order of n, right? And it cannot get better than this. So this is one method how you can utilize the stack data structure to arrive at your answer. There is one more method by which you can reduce the number of traversals required. And that is the two pointer approach. Once again, I have my sample string over here. And the question you should ask is, okay, how would I even know that I can use the two pointer approach? Well, the question itself is giving you a hint. You have to tell me the reverse string. So you generally iterate like this, but upon reversing, you have to look at the last character first. So that means you have to go in both the directions. So why not do them both at once? And that gives you a hint that you can use the two pointer approach. So what do you do? First of all, we will take our string and then convert it to a character array. In a character array, each of these characters, they will be a part of the array. So it eventually ends up looking like this. And now for the two pointer approach, what do you generally do? We have one pointer that starts in the beginning and we have one pointer that starts at the very end. Correct. Now look at both the left pointers and the right pointer. The left pointer is pointing at an English alphabet, but the right pointer is not pointing at an English alphabet. You know that you don't have to change the position of a non-English alphabet. So you don't have to do anything with this position. Correct. So that means I will do a right minus minus. As soon as I do it, my left pointer is pointing at an English alphabet and the right pointer is also pointing at an English alphabet. So as soon as this happens, just swap them because you have to reverse the string, right? And swapping can be easily done just by taking a temporary variable. So what will happen is A will get out, F will come over here in this place and A will now go in the last place. And since this operation is complete, I will now traverse my left pointer plus plus and right pointer minus minus. Again, look at it. The left pointer is pointing at a non-English alphabet. You don't have to change its place. So simply just do a left plus plus and your pointer moves one step ahead. Now left is pointing at an English alphabet and right is also pointing at an English alphabet. This is very clear. So you will just swap their positions. B gets out. E will occupy the original place and B will occupy the new place. And you will do left plus plus and then a right minus minus. So you see what we are doing. We take up the left and right pointer and start to move and converge in the middle. As soon as one pointer crosses the other, that is where you have to stop. So over here, you just have to swap one more time. So once you do that, C gets out, D swaps and then C takes the new place. The pointer will move one step ahead. They are now at the same place. So you cannot swap and that is where you stop. And now look, this array has your answer. Just convert it back to the string and then you will get your answer. Correct. The time complexity of this solution will again be order of n because you have to iterate through the array at least once. And this cannot get better than this because whatever be your string, you have to reverse it entirely, right? And you will have to look at each of the characters. So the time complexity cannot get better than this. And the space complexity of this solution is once again order of n because you need that extra array 
to store your results and then swap all the positions. Now, let us quickly do a dry run of this two pointer approach and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have a sample string that is passed in as an input parameter to the function reverse only letters. To begin with a dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create our string to a character array. And as soon as you do it, my character array starts to look something like this. Each of the character is now in an array element, correct? Going forward, we will now initialize the left and the right pointers. So left pointer is pointing at the first character and the right pointer is pointing at the last character. I do it over here. And then the next part is running a while loop until this left pointer is behind this right pointer. So I start this while loop until left is less than right, correct? And then what do you do? You check if the leftmost pointer is not pointing to an English alphabet, then do a left plus plus. The left pointer is pointing to an English alphabet, so don't do anything. But now you have to check the right pointer as well. So you check if the right pointer pointing at an English alphabet. The right pointer is pointing at an exclamation mark. So you will do right minus minus. And this pointer moves one step backward. So what will happen? This loop will now run again. And once again, you will check if both of them are pointing at English characters. If yes, now what you can do? You can swap both of them. And we are swapping them just by using a temporary variable. This loop will continue to run and you will continue swapping all of the characters that are English alphabets. Once you're out of this loop, the left pointer has met the right pointer and now you can stop. At the very end, just take up your character array and return it as a string. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As for my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you see a problem where you have an input test case and you have to look in both the directions. Even in this example, you have to look at the first character and the last character and then swap them. In those such scenarios, always try to consider a two pointer approach. A two pointer approach is essentially very, very handy when you have to converge in the middle or you have to look at the first element and the last element at the same time. So always give it a shot. So let me know what other string problems have you encountered, which can be solved using the two pointer approach. Just tell me everything in the comment section below and it will become a nice collection whenever you have to come back and review it in the future again. Also, let me know if you faced any problems while going throughout the video. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really keeps me motivated. And a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. Do remember that as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments. Stay tuned for my next video. Until then, see ya.